Hi everyone! In this video, we'll look at how VM detection is performed and learn a few tricks to bypass detection inside the VMware virtual machine. We'll start with one of the very popular tools called VM Detector, present at this URL, which is very, really nice because its source code is available and easy to understand, written in C Sharp. We have the tool over here, recompiled it. And if we look at the source code, we can see that detection for VMware player is done using a couple of techniques. It's done based on the BIOS data, computer system, disk drives, devices, and running services. We'll take each of those five detections individually and see how to bypass it. All right, let's begin. The first easy thing to do is to make sure that all the services that are running are not related to VMware. In this case, I've already taken care of the services on this virtual machine, but in normal cases, we would do something like this. This command shows, shows us all the services related to VMware, and then we can easily stop them and then delete them. VM detector looks for a couple of services. VM Tools, TPVC Gateway, and TP Autocon service. We don't have any of those services running, so from this point of view, we're good to go. The second interesting thing that's being checked is the disk drive. To check its model, the program will issue a command to get this WMI class win32 underscore disk drive. In our case, let's see what it would return. Okay, I've already taken care of the disk drive as well. So you can see that the model and the caption do not include the VMware string anymore. In case you want to modify those, it's very easy. You can do this from the registry on this location over here. You just need to modify the friendly name. Let's say if we put something here, so notice the first two things are very easy to bypass, the detection of the disk drive and the detection of services. Let's move on. Another detection looks at the presence of VMware string in Windows drives names. With this command, we can see all the loaded drive drivers, the drivers for all the devices. And let's filter for VMware related only names. I've already taken care of the services for this virtual machine, and I've replaced all of them with a different string. All these five services were previously referring the VMware. The way to change these names is the same for all the services. So let's discuss one. To access the device manager, we go into the properties of the PC and then device manager. Let's take, for example, the virtual mouse. In this case, the previous name was VMware pointing device. It's actually not possible to change this name through the registry, which was initially a, a bit frustrating, but there is another way. 
Looking at the properties of this driver, we can see in the events tab a list of different events. When the device was deleted, installed and so on. And notice something interesting here that it was configured based on this file oem7.inf. Let's check this file. oem7.inf in the Windows folder. There's the file. In this file, we just need to change the description of the service and the description of the disk. After that, restart the virtual machine and you will get a new service name. And then do the same procedure for all the devices that are referring to VMware, like the host device, bus device, SVG driver, and so on. All of those devices have an associated inf file, like this one, pointing to a configuration. Okay, so we've taken care of the services, this drive, and devices. Next, VM Detector is also looking at the BIOS data. BIOS data is obtained from this class, Win32 underscore BIOS. Okay. So notice that we have the serial number, which is actually the one we defined in the uh, VMX file for the virtual machine. But VMware appended another string in the beginning, which cannot be modified in the VMX file. It actually comes from the BIOS of the machine. To check this, we can use this very neat tool called firmware tables view, which shows the information from SM BIOS. Notice here, this tool reads the SM bias and all the information we saw before is here. VMware, the, this serial number, bias version, and so on. Since we don't have an option to modify the bias data from the virtual machine itself, we will modify the way that Windows presents this information. To do that, we need to first understand the Win32 underscore bias class which is defined in this folder, simwin32.mof. This class has a lot of members that we will override. Some of these members are the bias version that we've seen before and the serial number. Let's discuss a very nice trick. We can actually create a custom class of our own and define the members of the Win32 underscore BIOS class to replace the original ones. Notice this has another class as a parent class, BIOS underscore element. Let's see what it contains. So this class contains the version as well, manufacturer, primary bias, and so on. To play with this class, I've created another file where I define this information. The version, manufacturer, serial number, name, and ca characteristics. Exactly what is being returned by this call here. So this is the command that VM detector will issue and these are the results. We need to modify the serial number. In this case, I defined another class 
and then defined an instance of this class and replaced the serial number. If we compile and run it, it will replace the bias information in the WMI repository with our class. Let's see. You can see here the WMI repository has been rebuilt. There is a warning here, but we don't care about restarts at the moment. And now if we check the BIOS info, we should have a different version that does not include the VMware string. Exactly the same trick we will have to do with the computer information. The computer information comes from the WMI class called win32 underscore computer system, which is defined in the same file. The class description is pretty long. We can go through, you can go through this yourself. But basically we'll do the same trick. Defining another class and then an instance of it and replace the model and the manufacturer to exclude the VMware string. If we run VM detector application again, there shouldn't be any detection anymore. I haven't noticed any issues, but if you want to restore the WMI repository, it's very easy. Just use the same mofcomp command with the initial file. Let's see. Restore the repository, then try VM detector again. And now we get detected. All right. So to recap, in this video, we've seen how VM detector tool performs different detections based on services, model of the disk drive, devices, the BIOS data and computer information. And we've also seen how to make your virtual machine more resilient against being detected. I hope you like this video and share your comments and suggestions with us. Thank you for your time and don't forget to subscribe in order to help the channel grow. Take care. Cheers.